So this is introduction. Uh, this is introduction to creative writing with Mr. Smith here at Tennessee Tech, spring semester 2021, and they have written poetry, fiction, and creative nonfiction. And now we're done, and now they have to put together their final portfolio, uh, which is due in just a couple of days. And they have to write a reflective statement, and they have to grade themselves on the semester. Um, and so I want to begin just with the basic premise of, of this whole project that we're doing uh, for Monday. You all came in with varying levels of experience, varying levels of confidence, and varying levels of understanding what the whole point of this class is. For some of you, this was an elective to fill out your curriculum here at Tennessee Tech. But having read all of your work and worked with you all now for, for several weeks uh, since late January, I can say with much, much confidence that each and every one of you is an author. And so part of doing a final portfolio and part of this last project and what I want to kind of energize and encourage today is the self-identification as an author. I want this to be a part of your uh, vocational formation, whether or not you have many other careers. I've had many different careers in my life. Um, I've just rebooted one of the first careers I had in my life uh, was um, that I worked in a record store and I collect albums and I've got way too many of them. And I just started a partnership uh, with a local boutique where I'm selling vinyl here in Cookville again. And I'm really excited about it. So I needed a side hustle. I worked in a church uh, for uh, many, many years uh, and I loved having a second job much more than I thought I would. Um, and so I haven't worked there since last June and I decided I needed a side hustle. So I'm selling uh, books and albums at the uh, at the tiny cloak um, right off the Maddox building, it's the back of the Maddox building here in Cookville. Uh, little 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 suite, small suite on the square. So uh, when I don't remember when it was that I got the bug that I was an author, but I I know one of the times I got it was when I went to Naropa Institute, which is a poetry and creative writing school in uh, it's also a Buddhist school in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. I don't know if Kyle's on the call today, but Kyle. Um, probably knows where um, uh, where he's one of the people not on the call that needs to get this later uh, in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. So, I'm here. Oh, there I'm you here. are. Oh, hey man, I'm sorry. I was looking for the K, and and you guys aren't even in close to alphabetical order. I don't know why I thought you were. Um, uh, so uh, you know where Boulder is in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Well, anyway, that's where I got to learn from uh, Allen Ginsberg and Ann Waldman. And one of the things that I did that summer was I made a uh, a chat book. And, and they're all in the lineage of the beat movement. And the beat movement started in the 50s and 60s, but they were extremely, uh, like, vividly punk rock. Um, they were DIY. Now, that term DIY means so much more to your generation because, I mean, you guys have, you know, uh, you know cottage core and, like, like radical, like, knitting circles. And, and people, people, there's so many self-empowering, like, like online communes now, like you can basically live in like a commune online where you like, where you meet other people who are into like collecting the same cards that you're collecting or are into like roller coasters, you know, like one of you is into. So like you can find your, your community like this. But we, before we had the internet and before we had podcasts and Reddit and discussion boards, uh, we gathered, you know, in coffee shops and at saloons and bars and on college campuses and in church basements and just random on the street and we would uh, have open mic nights and we would spit poetry and also share other forms of writing. And so the original um, uh, DIY press movement during the beat movement, they didn't have uh, photocopiers had not yet been invented. Xerox machines were not yet around. And they used what's called a uh, mimeograph machine, which was very primitive and didn't really even look that good. Um, but Diane DePrima uh, and her uh, boyfriend, uh, sometimes boyfriend Leroy Jones, later Amiri Barakhi, started this newsletter called The Floating Bear. And, and then Ed Sanders in New York City had one that was Expletive U, a, a journal of the arts. And um, pretty much if you could get your hands on a mimeograph machine, you could make a magazine. And so that, that thus began uh, the small press. Um, uh, later on in the 60s, they had what was called the underground press. And these came out in newsprint. Um, and they were distributed for free at rock concerts where you would see, you know, the Jefferson Airplane and Jimi Hendrix and the Grateful Dead it was part of the whole 60s counterculture. And then later on in the 80s during punk rock, we had what we call uh, uh, fanzines. And so a, a, a poetry or fiction, whatever genre is, 
uh, chat book is a form of a, of a DIY book that you can make yourself. The basic um, mechanics of it are very, very simple. You print your poems, you can use your, you know, your laser printer, um, you can um, uh, write them out and you can go and use the um, a photocopier at a place like Staples. You can actually get Staples to, to fold it and bind it for you if you want. Um, I've made several chapbooks at the local Staples here on Willow uh, Avenue. We used to have what was called Kinko's. Every college town had a Kinko's and it was a DIY copy shop. And you can go in and make your own copies. I think they can make them for you in the University Center or you can go to Tech Printing Services, which is in the old Smokestack building, and then maybe we'll make you, would make your booklet for you there as well. There's plenty of places in town that will make a, make a little booklet for you. Um, but you can also make them yourself. Um, so this is actually an old old church bulletin, but basically you can take any um, uh, blank on this one. You take any like eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and you fold it halfway and you need as many pages as you're gonna have in it. Um, and then you print your work on um, on both sides, and you maybe um, include some artwork, maybe a collage, maybe a photograph of something that you've taken, and you can digitally you can digitally make all this. Um, some people might even make it in Publisher or Word. Um, the the program that you know professionals use is called InDesign, and there's many computers on tech that have InDesign. There is a learning curve though if you've never used um, InDesign before. It's a, a professional uh, self-publishing uh, software that professional, you know, like magazine publishers as well use um, InDesign as well. Um, here's a chat book I made uh, about uh, five years ago um, called Keep God Weird. Um, I did a, a, a full color cover um, and then black and white on the inside. There is, there is artwork. I made up a, you know, a publisher, the Petite Press um, here and uh, um, and it's got the title page, and then most of the most of it is uh, religious uh, uh, poetry based on the theme of um, of God being weird. Um, I've got a um, dedication in there, uh, things like that, and it's all folded. And I made copies of these, and we did a poetry reading on campus. Me and two other campus authors. Uh, one guy did mostly a prose chapbook, and then my former, uh, both former students of I. So we did it. We did a. Uh, Kind of a debut opening. It was at the Talon Theater, which was in the um, while the Bechtel Playhouse was under re reconstruction. They did all the theater out of um, a room in the old um, Foundation Hall. It's no longer there, but it was a, it was a fun fun place to do stuff while the while the Playhouse was under uh, reconstruction. So so one option for you all uh, to format your um, your final portfolio is to make a chapbook. Well, Mr. Smith, why would I want to do that if I could just send you um, a, a Google Doc like I've been sending you all semester long? Because I want you all to uh, imbibe, to inherit, to internalize, to completely take on the identity that we are authors. And authors do not exist in a cloister in, a, in this little kind of you know workshop monastery uh, where with the other writers are the only audience that you have. But actually, this if you make this, um, and you make it at, at, at Staples or at print services, you can give them away to parents, significant others. You can leave them in random places like, like Brost and Poets and on a table in the UC. Um, you can even sell them for a fundraiser on the internet if you need a little bit of extra money for your summer uh, travels. You can make a little page online and be like, I made a chat book, it's five bucks. You know, here's, my, here's how to order it, here's my Venmo, here's my PayPal. Um, uh, and I'll mail it out to you if you send me five dollars. Or you might want to charge more because actually printing it and all that, that actually will cost you a little bit of money. So you might charge ten dollars uh, for your poetry chapbook and earn some summer scratch uh, that way. Um, the other thing that people do, and it's probably a little bit more popular and that I sent you guys a little bit of information about, is they do what's called a, uh, a, a digital um, portfolio. And there are many many amazing like DIY publishing, uh, free publishing uh, suites online uh, for a, basically a DIY website. Um, and you can just decide which one that you want to use. You know, you want to use, you want to use a, a Wix or uh, Google or Blogger or WordPress. Um, that's up to you. But you do a little bit of research and I sent you some links about how to do that. Now I've not vetted those um, uh, uh, links. I showed you those links, I'm sorry, on um, on Monday, um, I need to. I, I still haven't sent them to you. I'll send them to you with some other information that I'm going to share here in the in the in the class today. But basically, um, you can research what kind of web platform 
you want to use, and then you would present a sample of your work on that. And again, the purpose for doing that, instead of just sending me a Google document, is once again to showcase and show off your work and to expand your audience. Now, a digital writing portfolio, more than a chapbook, also has the advantage that this can become a uh, calling card, almost like a virtual uh, resume, or as we, we fancy professor types like to call it a CV or curriculum vitae, which is just a fancy word for a resume. Um, professors like to make up fancy words for more commonplace words. Um, but basically, you would include the same excerpts that you would show me in a Google Doc or the same excerpts that you would put into a chat book slash fanzine, um, and, and you would make a digital website that you can keep, and that would have your contact information. It would have your um, writing statement of, of that. So what is, a, what, is a, what is a writing statement? It can include a little bit of uh, biography. It can include a little bit of your purpose. Uh, and sense of uh, sense of call as a writer. It can talk about uh, your genres that you're interested in. It can talk about your influences, uh, and it, it it basically is a short uh, paragraph or two, uh, or maybe a little bit more that defines your philosophy of creativity. Uh, this can really be as short or as long as you want it to be, as polished or not. Now, don't write me a whole book uh, for your artist statement, but I guarantee you this artist statement, this, this public reflective statement is going to be one of the main things that I'm going to be looking at um, next Monday, because I'm assuming that most of you are going to be presenting me with stuff I've already read and that your classmates have already read, but you're going to present your favorite work, hopefully revised at least a little bit um, by Monday. So you're, you're going to present at least two of the three genres you can present from all three genres you don't have to send all of what you wrote you can write part of a story or one of your poems uh, you pick this is your this is your greatest hits album uh, uh from the semester so you just present for your final portfolio the work you're the proudest of and this will include uh, work you've already presented plus revisions of, of of the same if you have something you wrote before this class something you wrote outside of class that maybe you didn't think fit the definition of the class, but you're really, really proud of, or you've written something new. Maybe you've been writing poetry. We did our poetry unit first, you know, back in uh, February. Maybe you've been writing poetry nonstop since February. Maybe you've got a new poem uh, that you're really, really excited about that you want to share. You can share any extra material um, and you can, you can present it or package it in a chapbook. And if you make a chapbook, you need to print at least one copy for me, but I would encourage you to print multiple copies to give to your friends. Um, and, and if you're bring, delivering a chapbook to me, you need to deliver it to the English office in room 320 of Henderson Hall. That's kind of the penthouse suite of Henderson Hall. And you would um, ask one of the staff there uh, to place it into my mailbox. And that would be by uh, four o'clock. I believe they leave at four. Sometimes they leave early in the day. So I wouldn't wait till four uh, on this coming Monday. Uh, you can also um, make a digital uh, portfolio. Now, you can just send me the, the, the Google Docs if that's what you want to do, though I, I really want you to consider uh, investing the time and the energy in making whatever you present for next Monday attractive and exciting and new. Um, so the format is optional. The, the thing that's new that's not optional is you need to write this uh, professional, creative, defining statement, which is going to be an element of of calling card, CV, biography, purpose and call, genre, likes, influences. You can also talk a little bit in that statement, but remember, I want you to think of this as being public to the world and not directed towards me. You can write a little bit of the statement about your process as a writer, how you're growing and learning as a writer, and you can even talk about this this collective, uh, this this little affinity group, this little working group that you've been a part of called English 3400 Creative Writing, Intro to Creative Writing with Mr. Smith this semester. So so you're part of this 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 commune of writers uh, that has existed for the duration of this class, and so you can talk about that if you want to in your statement. Um, a second statement that needs to be written as a cover letter and sent to me in, in, in the body of the email is your self-evaluation. You can also reflect a little bit more on the semester in the self-evaluation. You can uh, you can do like, uh, you know, a paragraph or more here. Uh, you can talk about what you've done. You can outline that you you can outline your understanding of what we agreed on at your initial conference of what the um, 
you know, course requirements were. And you can you can remind me that you've done everything, you know, that you agreed to do. But you need to give yourself a letter grade. Um, and it's very likely that that will be the letter grade that I agree that you get. So um, you're going to do a self-assessment, a self-evaluation of your work. Um, if you if you give yourself a B, uh, you, you have to have a really good reason to do that. Um, and if you give yourself an A, um, congratulations. You know, but I, I don't expect many of you are going to give yourself a B. But you know, that's a that's between you and you. Um, if I if I feel you unjustly give yourself a B. Um, I might bump you up to an A, but if you, if you give yourself a B um, and you really wanted to give yourself an A and you end up getting a B in the class, that's on you. So um, I, I take this part of the uh, assignment very, very seriously um, because I believe in the context of this, that as I said to you guys on Monday, I'm a member of this community. I'm not the master of this community. I'm a coach, not a tyrant. I've been here to facilitate unlocking um, your energy and your commitment to the craft of creative writing. Um, and not here in any kind of um, punitive or um, even even my evaluative authority is simply comes from my passion for the craft that I share with you. And so I've tried to make my notes that I've sent you to be geared towards celebrating the accomplishments of your contributions um, in the um, uh, the two feedbacks I gave over creative nonfiction and poetry. Um, the turnaround on here is really fast, so you'll turn this in on Monday by the end of the day, um, and uh, we'll have my first batch of uh, uh, check-ins on Wednesday, and they're 15 minutes or less. Um, given that they're stacked the way that they are, they're, they're going to have to be short. Um, if you wish to schedule a longer meeting uh, with me just to um, process or unpack any of the stuff we've done this semester, we need to do that outside of those 15-minute those meetings, and we can set up a, a, a Google uh, office hour or a telephone office hour at a uh, at another time. Um, I want you all to, even though I've done all these things multiple times before, and to me they're second nature. I want you to understand that that making these little booklets. Here's one my friend Richard made. He did something really cute. Um, it's uh, he he's got one one half of it is an exorcism, uh, the ten thousand violences. And then the other side is the 10,000 nurtures, and it's a prayer, um, and, and it flips up upside down for each section, and then each section is one half of the book, and there's like a, um, and then there's a staple down down the spine here. So, uh, the, the, the making these little chat books is is really fun, and it's it, it takes a little bit of time. You need to start now, but it's actually not that it's not that hard, and it's it's extremely fun uh, to make these. Making a digital portfolio. Um, will be the same, just not that hard. Now, as far as being an author out there in the world, there's something else that you can do that's optional that I'm going to send you some information about that I borrowed from another uh, creative writing professor, which is you can start putting your stuff out there into the literary world. And she's got instructions that she's used in one of her creative writing classes, this is uh, Dr. Ducton, for um, how to get published in a, in a journal. And she has it as a requirement in her upper division creative writing courses. And many of her students do get published. And for many of them, it's the first time they get published. And it's a way to start building up your career and your identity as a creative writer. So I'm going to send you those handouts, which she was so generous um, to share with me. Um, and I would encourage you all uh, to look up uh, uh, Dr. Ducton uh, for the fall. I asked her what she's teaching. Let me see if she wrote me back. She hasn't wrote me back yet. but. Um, as you're figuring out your fall schedule, or you've maybe already figured figured out, or maybe you're graduating, I would highly recommend um, uh, Dr. Ducton uh, for uh, creative writing. Um, we we will have a new uh, professional poet here, um, and there is an upper level poetry workshop, and we're in the middle of hiring our new Tennessee Tech poet. And that person, whoever that ends up being, will be on campus in the fall and probably offering uh, the poetry upper division poetry workshop. Um, if you do decide on creative writing as a major, you are allowed to take the creative writing workshops more than once in your genre if you once you've picked your genre. Um, also, uh, one of our top creative writing professors is Dr. Pelton, Ted Pelton. He's the former chair of the department, and he has a class that's supposed to be offered for Maymester. I don't know if you guys know about uh, Maymester. It's a it's a mini semester. It's a full three credit uh, three credit class uh, that just takes place uh, uh, around the uh, two weeks after the semester is over. So um, if you're free and you can afford it, um, he's teaching a class, uh, an intensive class on Bob Dylan uh, for Maymaster. And I would strongly encourage people to take that class if you can afford it and fit it into your schedule. 
Um, and he actually needs a few more people to sign up for it or they won't, they won't run it. So if you're looking for um, a, an extra elective or an a, a extra couple hours um, towards your graduation uh, over the summer, um, Dr. Pelton's Bob Dylan class is coming up in just a few weeks. I would highly recommend it. Now, I'm not completely unbiased here because if we get enough people in, in, in Pelton's Dylan class, I, I will um, probably be a guest you know, audience member try to sit in on that at least once. So, um, because it's a topic that I'm deeply passionate about. And if you've never studied uh, the work of Bob Dylan, he's quite an extraordinary person. As you remember, on a lot of your mentor days, you guys did singer songwriters uh, or, or vocalists or lyricists for your mentor day. And, and Dylan is the, as far as I know, the first um, pop song writer is a folk singer. Uh, and a songwriter to win the Nobel Prize in literature. So literature um, intersects with rock and roll and pop culture quite le legitimately today. Um, if I was younger and I had more time and, and tech would let me, I'd, I'd start a whole program and just, you know, rock and, studying rock and roll as, as literature. I do that in my lower division, um, American Lit as, and, and World Lit, as some of you learned in taking that class with me uh, before. Um, go see the play. Uh, it's uh, about four or five more shows. You got two of your classmates working on the play. Um, so support um, support them and go see uh, Failure or Love Story. It's up tomorrow, Friday and Saturday. And I'm going to hit pause on this. I'm sure, I'm sure I forgot some stuff. So I'm going to I'll loop back around with you guys and answer any of your questions. But that's an introduction to to let me let me just go over it one more time uh, for everybody uh, who either missed or who's re-listening to this later. Um, you're going to be submitting a body of, of already written, uh, slightly revised work from the semester, covering at least two out of the three genres that we covered. Um, there is no word length requirement to what you put in the portfolio. You're going to have a reflective public author's statement um, that's approximately 300 words long that defines your identity as a writer, your biography, your purpose, your call, um, your influences, your primary genres uh, that you write in. You're very much encouraged to take on one of the two genres that I've introduced today, the chat book, my favorite, or an online digital um, you know, blog type portfolio on a, web, uh, a DIY website such as WordPress or Wix uh, that you can make yourself for free on the internet. And then also um, the required self-evaluation, which will be in the body of the email, um, which will include uh, your grade. All of this, these instructions were sent to you on um, last Wednesday via email. And it says that 90, according to the internet, 90% of you have already read this email, which is great. Okay, so I'm gonna pause my recorded session of this intro to your final, and we will have a nice conversation, uh, just uh, clarifying or just bouncing ideas uh, bouncing ideas off of each other as we go and good wishing you